From the Tribune News Network, this is Newsbreak. I'm Krishna Russell. In her first interview since resigning as Minister of Youth, Sports and Culture last week, Seabreeze MP Lanisha Roll said yesterday that her integrity is intact. However, she declined to elaborate on the circumstances that led to her resignation from her ministerial post, noting that she tendered a voluntary resignation. Speaking to reporters in an interview outside of the House of Assembly yesterday, she said, quote, In the letter, I indicated as much as I wanted to indicate. Social media has been rife with speculation about what led to her surprise resignation. Asked to address the claims of impropriety, she said, quote, Absolutely not. I don't entertain social media claims. They are what they are. You deal with facts, you deal with issues, and you deal with truth. I don't have time for those things. The Tribune understands that Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis received an internal audit report from the Ministry of Finance more than a week ago, which sparked Mrs. Roll's resignation. Bahamar last night confirmed it has terminated another 100 staff as it prepares to reopen its high-end Rosewood and SLS resort properties in just two days' time. The Cable Beach Mega Resort in a statement said the permanent redundancies will mainly impact its nightlife and entertainment facilities, which have been hit harder than other amenities by COVID-19 health protocols, such as social distancing. Forecast business volumes were another factor, with the resort understood to have largely been running at occupancy levels in the low double Digits since its pre-Christmas 2020 opening, apart from one recent Super Bowl weekend. Impacted employees were told that their terminations were effective as of yesterday. Central and South Andrews MP Paisual Forbes announced yesterday that he will not seek re-election, a decision that reflects his belief that the Progressive Liberal Party leaders did not support his potential candidacy robustly enough. PLP supporters said Leon Lundy, a New Providence resident with a background in finance and ties to the island, now has the backing of the party. Mr. Forbes, who also represents Mangrove Key, said his decision was a very difficult one. Asked what he needed from the party's leadership to continue his pursuit of the nomination, Mr. Forbes said it was simple confidence. Police are seeking to identify the victim of the latest homicide after gunshots rang out shortly before 10 p.m. last night. Police at a checkpoint heard what appeared to be gunshots emanating from Bernard Road East. Superintendent Audley Peters said at the scene last night, quote, the officers proceeded in the direction of the sound and they came upon a body of a male lying at the eastern boundary of L.W. Young School with what appeared to be gunshot wounds to the body. Emergency medical services were summoned. On completion of their examination, they pronounced the body lifeless. Police are appealing to anyone with information to contact their nearest police station. Your complete news and information source, this is the Tribune News Network. In international news, Democrats sorted through lingering disagreements over emergency jobless benefits and other issues Tuesday and prepared to commence Senate debate on a $1.9 trillion COVID-19 relief plan that would deliver a major victory to President Joe Biden. With Democrats having no margin for error in the evenly split 50-50 Senate, Biden was expected to urge them on by conference call. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer said he planned to bring the sweeping bill to the floor as early as Wednesday teeing up first votes on a bill aimed at energizing the nation's battle against the pandemic and its wounded economy. The Biden administration sanctioned seven mid- and senior-level Russian officials today, along with more than a dozen businesses and other entities, over a nearly fatal nerve agent attack on opposition leader Alexei Navalny and his subsequent jailing. The measures emphasizing the use of the Russian nerve agent as a banned chemical weapon marked the Biden administration's first sanctions against associates of President Vladimir Putin. The Russian leader was an intimate and favorite of President Donald Trump, even amid covert Russian hacking and social media campaigns aimed at destabilizing the U.S. The Tribune's AccuWeather update a service of Bahamas Power and Light Company. A ridge of high pressure generates moderate to fresh breezes as it continues to shift eastwards through tonight. Boaters in the extreme northwest Bahamas should be alert for possible water spat activity, while there remains the risk of rip currents, especially along the eastern shorelines in the southeast Bahamas. In the northwest and central Bahamas, it'll be partly cloudy and warm, with a few showers and possible stray thunderstorms, mainly in the extreme northern islands through tonight. Small craft should be alert for gusty winds and higher seas in or near heavy showers or thunderstorms. Winds southeast to south at 10 to 15 knots over open waters, falling light and variable at times. Seas 2 to 4 feet over the ocean. In the southeast Bahamas, it'll be sunny, warm and breezy this afternoon, with a chance of a few passing showers. Fair and mild tonight. A small 
aircraft's caution remains in effect. Winds east to southeast at 15 to 20 knots over open waters. Seas 4 to 6 feet over the ocean. We'll have a daytime high temperature of 85 degrees and an overnight low temperature of 70. The sun will set this afternoon at 611 and will rise tomorrow morning at 630. That's news break. Details of the day's top stories in the Tribune newspaper now on the streets or stay up to date online at tribune242.com.